Uh, yeah, so my car was parked right here, but not anymore. My car is gone. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Hoosier State Fishing. Had an interview. Um, anyway, took the day off today for that interview. The interview went really well. Figured I'd take the rest of the day and enjoy my vacation day and do some fishing. I got my waders. Let's see if we can get on some big mama smallies. This is a spot that I regularly come to on my lunch breaks. So, without further ado, let's get a little hike on here and get to the spot. Water looks low, or lower than it has, it has been here recently. This looks really good. Oh, the winter. I am not ready for that. I just, I still feel like it's summertime, man. I just, I'm not ready for the winter time yet. I'm gonna put on a swim bait, like a soft swim bait. It's just a uh, Reaction Innovations uh, Little Dipper, and I'm just gonna put it on this uh, swim bait head. On my spinning rod, I've got a Z-Man tube tied on, and it's I've got it on a Ned Rig jig head. It's not gonna be a very long wade, but we're gonna make the best of it. But yeah, so I had an interview today. It went really well. I got an offer, and I think I'm gonna accept it. I'm not happy where I'm at, so it's just, it's time for something new. The only downside is the hours. It's a very crazy schedule. It's a two, two, three schedule. So basically, I'm gonna be working every other weekend. Uh, night shift. It's gonna take a lot of getting used to, but I'm used to working night shift. You know, I've done it before uh, while I was in the Army overseas. I worked a night shift a lot, and I actually enjoyed it a lot. So it's just a matter of just getting used to it is all. Let's get to fishing here. Let's stop talking about work and personal life and just get to fishing. Basically what we're doing is we're looking for areas with little to no current and deeper water. I have a feeling that's where they're gonna start, you know, staging up anyway. They're gonna be close to those deep holes. I am snagged up already. That didn't take long. There, got, nope. What's going on here? Why is this thing? What is going on? Why is it? I'd like to point out that this is the first time that I've had my Abu Garcia Revo X out since it's been back from warranty. Um, I sent it in for warranty because the side plate would come off at random times. They repaired it. They stripped it down because the last time that it happened, it fell in the water and the sand and got grit and stuff inside of it. So they went ahead and took it all apart. They replaced the side cover. They replaced the spool and to my knowledge, fixed it. Made my first cast, got stuck up, hung up. And I go to, I mean, my handle's disengaged, okay? This, the clicker is, is, it's not. Go to get it loose. And it freaking, I did this number here to get it loose and the spool turns. So obviously they, something is wrong with this reel. Once again, okay, I got my bait loose, bent the hook out, but I wanted to, want to explain to you what is going on. So basically I got hung up, tried to give it a pop to pop it loose. The drag will let go. It just lets go. It's almost like when you have a spinning reel and you, you put on the back spin or the, you know, the reverse spin on, on accident or whatever, and you let the thing go and it just gives you a blow up. That's what is going on with this reel. First time I've used it since I got it back from Abu Garcia. With that being said, I'm just going to continue to use it and just be as careful as I can. I think what I'm going to have to do is to remember to keep my thumb on the spool when I set the hook. Normally I bear down on the spool anyway when I set the hook, so I'm just going to have to remember to do that so my line doesn't slip and cause an extreme backlash. Last time I was out, I was creek fishing. Ended up tripping over a huge boulder, fell and tried to catch myself with my hands of course, and my rod was in my right hand, my reel, I was holding it like this, and went to, you know, catch myself all of my weight went down on my it was my 13 my concept a my reel bent this bent the handle and i fixed the handle on the concept a i should have just used it all i did was bend it back but i should have just rolled with that of course i would have if i had known that this one was going to be such a pain in the butt nice little deep hole over there see if there's anything hiding let's get a bottom bait over there get that tube over there so this is how i've got it rigged up i really highly doubt that this is the way you're supposed to do it but it's just on a ned rig uh jig head the, the z-man it's got the weed guard i went put the weed guard in first i thought that this was hollow all the way through but it's not it's got a hard plastic you know it's solid plastic there at the very tip but i already had it rigged that way so i just left it if you're going to rig a tube this way you've got to do the weed guards first so you just slip the weed the tube over the top of the weed guard and poke it through and then follow along with the rest of the jig head it's kind of crazy to reflect this could very well be the one of the last few times that i fished this creek for a while this new job, you know, it's in Indianapolis, complete opposite direction. Kind of bittersweet, to be honest with you. Still gonna make videos. Definitely not gonna be any more lunch break videos, especially since I'm gonna be on the night shift. But we'll just keep on keeping on, man. Life's a garden, dig it. It's very important to keep bottom contact with, the, with these Ned rigs in the winter time. Bounce it along, any kind of crustaceans, any kind of crawdads, I should say. In these colder months like this, really anytime, they're not gonna leave the bottom. 
unless they absolutely have to. And when these Ned rigs, when, when crawfish, when they're crawling across rocks, over the tops of pebbles and rocks and big boulders, they make a really distinct clicking noise. And fish key in on that, of course. So it's really important to keep contact with the bottom because you're imitating that clicking noise and it's a lot more natural, a lot more natural presentation. It doesn't hurt to pop it every couple, you know, every, every so often, but for the most part, you're gonna wanna keep it on the rocks. Try to imitate crawfish and helgramites and stuff of that nature as much as you can. And I can just feel it. It's moving with the current. I'm keeping my slack reeled in, keeping the rod tip high, generally skipping across the top of these rocks. If I feel it go over the top of a big one, I'll just dead stick it. I'll just let it just fall. Try to keep it in that zone as, 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 as long as possible. I haven't accepted the offer that this new job has offered me yet. Uh, not that I feel it's necessary to accept an offer immediately. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking the time to think about your options and think about the scheduling and the pay and especially as you get older, you know, it's really wanting stability, you know, I don't want to be jumping from job to job all the time. Of course, that's one of the downfalls of not having a degree. You know, you get a degree in a subject that you're interested in because you plan on that being your career for the rest of your life. Not for everybody, but for, for most people anyway. You get that degree in whatever field you're studying because you want a career in that field. I don't have a degree, I've just got <laughs> the army working on helicopters. So I've got some mechanical background. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that there's nothing wrong with just taking your time and really trying to figure out what you want to do. So that's what I'm doing basically. I figured rather than just immediately signing a bunch of paperwork, when I got the email, the offer email, I'd come out here and just kind of reflect a little bit, do some fishing, try to make a as, as best a decision, best educated decision that I can. I really would have liked to have told him, uh, a YouTube fishing star? <laughs> That's unrealistic. I'm gonna continue to do it. I enjoy, I enjoy making these videos and of course I enjoy fishing, but are you kidding me yet? I can't believe I haven't caught anything yet. Let's try right up there by that. There really ought to be something right up there by that root, that tree. Oh, right off the top of it. Holy cow. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but toot toot. That was a good cast. Oh, that's a fish. There's a fish. There we go. Picked it. Yep, I knew it. I knew there was gonna, there should have been something right by that tree. What is that? Is it a smallie? Yes. It's a smallie. Golden smallie. Yes, sir. Come here. Come here, you. And that is what we are after. Smoked it. He hammered it, man. Hammered it and started carrying it right back in under that tree or towards that root ball. Awesome fish. Let's let him go. Ooh, that water's cold. Golly, it's cold. I'm really enjoying this nasky. I brought it up in one of my other, oh shoot, is that a fossil? Oh, sweet fossil right here. Hang on a minute. I bought this nasky, or I didn't buy it. My dad got it for me. My dad got me this nasky because I needed another reel, spinning reel. I can't believe I spotted this thing as I, from this distance. Oh, there we go, I got it, I got it. Sweet. That's not it, right here. Check that out. I can't remember what those are called, but they're plant stems. Used to find these all the time as a kid. It's not supposed to be a fossil hunting video. I'll throw that in there for the kids. For the kids, you know what I'm saying. No, but he bought me this Nasky. Very, very nice. Smooth, super light. I compared it to a Shimano, uh, what, what are those called? The, the C4i or whatever. I can't remember what it's called, but I compared it to one of those. And I mean, as far as smoothness goes, man, I mean, it's right on par with it, I think. What is that reel called? I can't remember. Stratic, that's right. That's like a, what, $200 reel? Love this reel. A little bit faster gear ratio. I think it's a 6.4 to 1 or something like that. A little faster than your typical finesse, you know, finesse style reel, but it gets the job done. Just real slower. Is that a, that's a deer hunting blind. Oh no. I hope there's nobody in it. Crap. I'm gonna be as quiet as I can. I am not trying to mess anybody's hunting up. I gotta find some slack water. This is not cutting the mustard. I think I'm gonna change to something heavier. I'm gonna pull over right here and change. So let me just take a moment to explain to you what I'm gonna change to. Like I said, during this time of year when it gets really cold, when it starts to get really cold, that turnover starts to happen. I'm not gonna go out without at least having some sort of Ned Rig type type of jig tied on. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I've got a little 1 8 ounce, uh, I think it's VMC boxer head jig. Um, this is gonna work just like a regular Ned Rig, except for it's gonna be weak. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hula stick, okay? Z-Man hula stick, 
and I'm gonna rig it weedless. First, I'm gonna tie this on. A little bit bigger presentation, hopefully for that bigger bite. But basically, so this is a football jig head. Just a little 1 8 ounce. Cast a little further. Still a really great finesse presentation. So you're just gonna rig it just like you would uh, Texas rigging a worm, basically. I might have to get cut this trip early and go get my kids. I'm just working my way through here trying to find some deeper water and it's just looking pretty lackluster and I think I'm gonna have to go and pick my kids up. I can't believe it, man. I didn't pull anything else out of here but just that one little guy. Actually, I can believe it. The current is terrible. I'm gonna have to get going. I'm, I'm going too far. I've gotta stop. I've gotta get going. Let me get, up, let me get a couple casts up here ahead of these rocks. This might be a deep pocket up here and then we'll get going. I have got to pee like a daggum racehorse. One more cast, this is it, I've gotta go. Like hustle, there's nothing here, what am I doing? Just gonna hit these same little spots that I hit on the way this way and then uh, head on up to the car. Let's see if I can pick one more off by that tree where I picked off that, the only one we caught today. Be funny if I caught the same fish. Oop. Oh, that was a hit, 100%. I don't know if he got hooks or not. I honestly have no idea. There's a hit. Got him. There he is. That's a good one. That might be the same fish. I bet you that's the same fish. That fish I caught earlier was big enough to claim, you know, territory for himself. Drive all the other little fish away. I almost guarantee that's the same fish I caught earlier. I'm looking for a, a hole in his lip from where I caught him earlier. That's the same fish. He's got a dark rim around his tail. I don't see, where did I catch him earlier? I had him hooked in the side of the mouth, if I, if I remember right. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's the same fish. It might not be, though. So, there we go. We caught two today. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's not good, but we were only out here for, what, two hours? What are you going to do? You can't complain. Then another reason I think that might have been the same fish is because this is a completely different bait. I was using that tube earlier. So, he just got something different thrown in his face. Snatched up the opportunity. Uh, yeah, so my car was parked right here, uh, but not anymore. My car is gone. So I don't know if it got stolen or if it got towed. I don't understand why it would have gotten towed. I've been here, I've parked here hundreds of times. Ever happened to you guys? Let me know in the comments. The, the problem is, is I don't see any no trespassing signs. My car is gone. Hello. Are you sure you looked in the right spot? Oh, 100%. I'm over here close to like where I come for like my lunch breaks and stuff. I don't know. I, I guess I'll call a towing place to see if it for some reason got towed. Wonderful. How would it have gotten towed though? Because, mm, okay. All right. I don't know. I'm going to call around. That's funny. Hi, how are you doing? This is, um, my name is Derek Burton and I was, I'm hoping this is the right number to call and see if a vehicle has been towed recently. No, I was, I was parked on the side of the road fishing here on Big Walnut Creek. Oh boy, okay. Stranded, it's no vehicle. I know it's not your fault, I'm just upset. Um, yeah, so my vehicle was towed. The bus driver called and said that my car was blocking the road. I don't understand how that's possible. My car was barely, not even halfway in the road at all. There's no, no possible way. There's no kids that get picked up here unless they pick up baby deer. I mean, that's, I don't see any houses. The hell? Hi, how you doing? This is Derek Burton. Um, calling to see if you might possibly have my car. In a wreck? No, it just it got towed. Oh, recently I was on the side of the road fishing uh, on Big Walnut Creek, and it got called in by a it got called in by a bus driver. Apparently, it was somehow blocking the road. You wouldn't have you wouldn't happen to have their number, would you? Okay. Three four two seven. Three four two seven. I appreciate it. Thank you. Huh? Bye. <laughs> this is just a fiasco hey how you doing this is Derek Burton calling to see I, th I think you might have my car um, oh, okay wonderful I'm stranded uh, what will the how uh, yeah what time do you guys close yeah I would really appreciate it I, I need my car uh, I can't believe it. what can is there any way that was I blocking the road oh this you crazy mother